Hi, my name is Alyssa and I draw cartoons and cartoony things. So this week I'm switching up my A to Z sketch series alphabetical order because I messed up. But it's not entirely my fault and I will explain why. <laughs> so what had happened was I posted my D and E video on all my social media, including Tumblr, and somebody commented on the D and E video, uh, where's Etoile? And I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's the little twin stars purple sheep from the Sanrio Amiibo villagers that were in New Leaf. Uh, you could acquire these Sanrio Amiibo cards. I bought mine on eBay and um, you could scan them in and get specific Sanrio themed characters. Now the fan Animal Crossing wiki that I've been using as my reference guide list for all the Animal Crossing villager names A to Z, they didn't list any of the Sanrio characters in their main villager page. They do have pages for each of the villagers, but they're not listed in their main villager page. So I skipped them, not knowing that I had skipped two C name villagers in the process, Chai and Chelsea. Uh, so I skipped them on total accident, but it was actually serendipitous because not only could I take a break from drawing three villagers, I normally post nine a week, so this week I only had to post six because there's only six Sanrio villagers, so it was a little bit less work. But also I got to take a break from the limited color palette I've been using for all the villagers up to this point and for all future villagers because I wanted to make these unique and stand out since they're already breaking the mold of the alphabetical order. Anyway, I figure why not give them their own pastel color palette to match? So with all that said, let's get right into the sketches. Just like I start all my other speed paints, I start with a sketch phase. And heads up if you hear dogs barking, I'm not gonna stop the recording to start it all over again because we have dogs on our street barking all the time and it's just the way it is. And if I waited for them to stop barking, I'd be waiting for hours. So not gonna happen. I'll try to edit out as much as I possibly can. Anyhow, so the one I had the most trouble with sketching actually I thought was gonna be Rilla, but I actually have a lot of fun drawing the gorillas because they have a lot of interesting body shapes and stuff. So she came out great. But Toby here, I had trouble figuring out how to make his pose look the certain the right way, the right way I was going for. So the red lines that pop up right about here, my boyfriend actually stepped in to give me some suggestions and then I took his suggestions and modified them to my liking and my sense of proportion because I like that big bobblehead look. And his final color result is actually one of my favorites of the six, uh, how it came out. So I'm happy with him. And the rest I just sketch and <laughs> not much more to say about the sketch process. You can see it unfolding. Uh, this is the quickest part of the video because I did want to show the entire process of creating these villagers. I typically just so show the sketch phase, but in this video, since it's just these six villagers to focus on, you'll see the sketch phase and then one of the line coloring phases I'll talk about more later and then the final art color phase for all six. And somebody suggested last week that I slow down on the sketch video, like uh, slow the pace down of the sketch videos in the future. Um, I will do that next week with the next A to Z video that I'm working on. I will slow down the pace and talk about each individual villager a little bit more. But for this video, I wanted the sketch phase to go pretty quick because there's a lot to get through of all six final full color processes in this video. And I didn't want it to be like a 35 minute video. I don't know if anybody would watch that. <laughs> Let me know if you would. Maybe I will make like a 30, 30 40 minute video sometime. Uh, anyway, my favorite, Chai, uh, the one that I should have known that I skipped because she was in my village, she was in the speed paint I did of my villagers back when on this channel. I did a speed paint, it's still my most popular video. Um, and she was in it and she was like this big part of the picture and was a big part of my village, so my town, so it's like, how did I not know I skipped her? <laughs> like Chelsea I wouldn't have remembered really, but Chai I should have remembered. I did you dirty, I'm sorry. But now she gets to be part of this like special set. So here is the next phase that I normally don't show on my sketch videos. Um, I did this in my, my Anka video where I talk about my process for these villagers. I basically, I bring the sketch with the rough colors into Adobe Animate just because it's what I'm used to working with. This step is totally optional. You can do all of this in Procreate. I just like the clean lines I get when I do this. And what I'm doing is taking a vector um, pencil tool and outlining all the areas and then filling them in with the colors that I eyedropper from the rough colors from the sketch here. Um, and what this does is, and I ignore all the details like the little, the glare in her eyes and the little deep fine details. What this does is it creates a base of really solid clean shapes that I then bring in uh, via Dropbox to procreate to then overlay the colors and the other fine details on top of. And I do this because I really like those sharp clean vector shapes that I get by doing this and it's just a program I'm used to using so for me it's like second nature even though it's jumping between programs and kind of counterintuitive. Uh, not really how I would recommend doing this kind of art to anyone unless you're a freak like me and you use Adobe Animate for almost all your art so <laughs> I don't even really animate hardly ever I just use Adobe Animate because it's it's a vector art program that I can wrap my head around I guess so <laughs> 
I, yeah, I only, so I recorded footage of all the characters where I did that step, but the only one that came out right was Rilla. So if anybody knows why QuickTime screen recording did me like that, uh, please help me troubleshoot because I can't find out online why that happened to me. So she's the only one I got that process part for, but you get the idea. So on to the more fun part, which is bringing these flat color shapes into Procreate. And then I take a pencil brush on a new layer and I do the little fine details here like the eyelashes and some of the lines around the fingers that you need to define those shapes. I try to use those as sparingly as possible because I want most, I want the shapes to do most of the talking, right? I want most of the structure of the image to come from those solid shapes that are already on that layer. So I don't want to add too many little fine detail lines. I want to keep it pretty simple. And then once I've added all these little details in, I duplicate that color layer, that flat color layer that I imported from uh, my Dropbox, the one I didn't animate. I duplicate that layer, I desaturate it, make it darker, and usually change the tint of it to like a purpley color, right? Purple or blue, whatever looks more shadowy for that particular character. What I do on this duplicated layer is I set it to mask. Now in the Anka video, I would said something like, oh, I don't bother with the mask, I just use the eraser so I can get it done faster. Actually, now that I do the mask, it's a lot faster. So what the mask does is, if you've never used a mask, I click the layer and I set it to mask. And on that mask layer, you paint only with black or white. I think you can paint with shades of gray or whatever, but I only use black or white. And black takes away that image and white puts it back. So I basically fill the whole layer as that darker desaturated purple shadow color and I take a black paintbrush set to the Bonobo chalk brush, which is that soft kind of grainy brush I used to get that texture. And I just, I paint in the light because I've said this many, many times, but my brain doesn't work so good when I think, where does the shadow go? Though I do add in like here with the hair, I add in the shadow later. Um, but in general, my brain works a little bit better when I think of it as painting with light rather than adding in shadow. It just makes a little bit more sense to me. So that's how I like to uh, highlight and shade the pictures in this style. So by painting with black on that big soft brush, I'm essentially painting the light onto the image. And I just make sure it's all cleaned up and nice and then that's, that's that for that piece. And I repeat this process for the rest of these six characters in the same way. So as you can see with Toby, I'm doing the same thing where I'm just adding a few lines for like, you know, the little paws to help separate those little feet and, you know, all those little beans and make sure they're all separate. And I'm messing with the gradient background. I can't remember whose background I mess with the most. I think Etoile, I, I struggled with what colors to do in the background the most because I wanted that soft pastel look, but I didn't want her to fade too much into the background and not stand out and it was a whole thing. But Toby's came out. I think Toby's color scheme honestly came out the best. And I know like the other ones have much more cutesy wootsy Sanrio uh, color palettes, pastel, pinky, purple, girly color palettes, whatever. But I think Toby's turned out the strongest. I like, I really like that like limey yellow green with the orange and the blue. I just think it's a really striking color palette. And it's something I might use on a totally unrelated illustration down the line because I really like those colors together. It's very like summer popsicle colors or like a summer cocktail drink or something colors. It's really pretty to me. I love this little snowman guy or whatever on his head. I'm not, no, I'm not versed in like Sanrio lore. So like if there's a name for that, I know that Toby is based off of like uh, Caro Caro Karopi, the frog, but I don't know if that's if that snowman thing has a name or whatever, but it's really cute. I don't know what it is, but it's cute. If some Sanrio fan wants to fill me in, that'd be great. Now that we're on to Marty, um, not much to say about him. He's not as like uh, as um, eccentric, I guess, of a character design as the other ones. The other ones are a little more out there and quirky. This one looks more like a standard bear that would be in the game, except for the branded uh, Sanrio character on the shirt. You know, he doesn't look like a a non-Animal Crossing character, if that makes any sense. The other ones are a little bit more, like, unique looking. But that said, I think he's really cute and I love pastel yellow. That's probably my favorite color that I don't get to wear very often because it just makes me look very sickly with my skin tone or whatever, but I wish I could pull off, like, cute buttery yellow colors like that. I think that would be so cute. Maybe I just have to dye my hair a different color. I don't, I don't really know anything about seasons or hair colors or whatever, but in general, when I wear yellows and oranges, it makes me look very sick and weird, so. <laughs> The, my favorite colors that I can't wear, yellow and orange, um, like buttery yellow and orange like this. So um, yeah, not much to be said about him. I do like um, the gradient I went with in the background, the like more sunset colors, because when I do a yellow character, I want everything to be that soft buttery yellow, but he would have faded way too much into a background that was just the same color as his fur, so I had to punch it up with a little bit of pink or something like that. 
And yeah, just repeating the same process um, as I did before. And I'm taking on that mask layer to paint in these shadows, I'm just taking a white paintbrush on the Bonobo Chalk brush, the same brush I used for every one of these, and just painting in those shadows using that white on the mask layer. Way easier than before where I don't know what I was thinking when I did that last like tutorial with the Anka. I have to do like an updated, I keep saying I have to do an updated one. This is basically the updated video, honestly, the updated process video of that. Because when I said like, ah, just use an eraser to keep it moving, like, uh, using the mask is way better. <laughs> I, I regret when I said that. She has an interesting color palette too. I really like this like soft greeny color. And I think she was the one that I was looking at and I was like, yeah, I can't do the limited color palette for these because the other ones feasibly I could stretch them like Etoile might have had to have more of a um, more saturated purple and like the other ones could have fit in the in their limited color palettes like the other villagers. But Chelsea didn't really fit in any of the color palettes. I think she, I looked at her and I was like, she's going to look really not good in any of these limited color palettes that I have for the other villagers. So I think it was her that I looked at and I was like, okay, I have to do a pastel color palette for these villagers so they stand out. And I'm really glad I did because they make a really cute set, all six of them together. And they are kind of unique villagers and like not everybody knows they exist. Not everybody had the amiibo reader or the cards or any of that kind of thing. So they are kind of unique in their own right. That said, I hope I don't repeat this mistake again and find out that there's some other set of like magical amiibo villagers that aren't listed in the fan wiki and then I have to do a special set of them. I hope this ends up being the only like, you know, special set that stands out because I would like to do the rest in alphabetical order. So yeah, we're moving on to the fan favorite, Etoile, Etoile. I don't know how to pronounce that if somebody can correct me. I don't know anything about French or any of that. Um, but yeah, she's she looks like a little pastel purple cloud and has the little twin star stars on her. It's pretty clear to see why she's like the, the pastel lover's favorite, right? She just, she is the villager embodiment of a pastel themed village, right? Pastel town, dream town. Um, she looks like the cutest set of furniture, which is her matching furniture. And also she matches with mermaid furniture and like some of the princess stuff. Just like a very versatile cutesy wootsy. Like if you want the cutest villagers in the game, she's got to be in your, in your deck of cutest villagers, right? Is she the one? Yes. She's the one I, I struggled with the background colors the most. I think I kept messing with like a million different variations of this gradient until I found one that was like, uh, all right, this one's good enough. It was tough because like any one of those colors behind her, she would have just blended right into it. But I, you know, making that little like sherbet, rainbow sherbet color scheme or whatever um, ended up being the best solution I think to that problem. And using any one, yeah, using any one solid color for any of these, it kind of would have washed any of these pastel villagers right out. So I'm really glad I went with this unique color scheme for these and did these gradient backgrounds because it ended up working like very well for these particular villagers. <laughs> Again, this this one I painted with the light the most, I think, because the other ones you'll see me go back in and add more shadows, and I do add some shadows on her, of course, but I really took painting with the light to my advantage on here, and I ended up just making that whole body of hers, treating the whole body of hers like one big ball, instead of doing all those individual little, um, I don't know, tufts of fur, layers of fur, whatever you'd call it, her, like, wool on her body. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just, I can imagine like sunlight hitting, hitting these villagers when I paint this way in a way that is harder for me to do when I do this, what I'm doing right now, where I, I paint the shadows in. It's a little bit harder for me to visualize. Does anybody else have that problem when they do shading? Or is it, I'm, nothing's ever just me. Whenever people say that on the internet, hey guys, is it just me? You could think of the weirdest thing that you've ever done in your life and there's going to be a hundred other people on the internet who are like, oh yeah, I totally do that all the time. So it's definitely not just me, but I do see more frequently in painting uh, tutorials that people will paint shadows onto its shadow layer. And I just, my brain just doesn't know what to do with that. Like I can do it, but it's very counterintuitive. I would rather chisel light into something than vice versa. Um, so yeah, we're on to Chai, my favorite of the six. She was, like I said, she was in my village. I think she's really, really cute. I love blue, like baby blue and yellow together. I was obsessed with when I was younger. There was this website um, called, maybe I'll do a video about this sometime, like art that, weird internet art that inspired me as a kid, right? There was this pixel website back in the day when people would like make pixel adoptables and everybody made their own web pages and I coded my own web pages on notepad and uploaded them to like, you know, GeoCities or whatever, right? People made their own websites and there was like 88 by 31 pixel buttons and cute adoptables and all this kind of stuff. My favorite site was Starlux Sweetwater Valley, and it was just a site full of themed pixel adoptables. Like you'd go to different parts of the castle via drop-down menu and there'd be like 
little elves and critters or whatever. But anyway, that she had other things you could download for your own website that were like backgrounds. And one of them, was, it was so simple. It was just like baby blue with little powder yellow stars. And it was just a little tile background. And I used that as the back, the wallpaper on my desktop for so long. And I just, cause I thought baby blue and baby yellow together was like the cutest thing ever. So <laughs> the most mundane story of all time, but I still remember it. You remember like the dumbest things from when you were a kid, right? Like there was people that were talking about um, like all their memories of like their weird names for their webkins and neopets and stuff. Like these memories get so deeply ingrained into your mind, right? So yeah, I still remember being obsessed with baby yellow and blue as a color combo. So that maybe that's why she's my favorite. It's just I've always been drawn to that color combo. I just think it's so cute. And it's not too cute in the way that like pastel pink and purple is. Like no shade to pastel pink. This whole video is going to be pastel pink, but <laughs> it's it's like the overrated cutesy color scheme, right? It's like pink and purple. Blue and yellow is the real cute color scheme. <laughs> Though I did want to keep in mind I wanted to draw Chai in a style that was slightly different than I drew her in before. Um, before I drew her in a style that was, first of all, it was outlined all the way. It wasn't like lineless or mostly lineless like this style. And also I drew her with more like realistic elephant proportions in comparison to other villagers. Whereas this one I'm keeping a more consistent uh, body proportion to keep her consistent with all the other villagers I've been drawing. So I uh, just wanted to make her look a little bit different. And now here I'm going to show all the final results of everything and everybody. I really like uh, Rilla's like Superman ice cream background colors, which uh, appeal to me a lot as a Michigander who loves or loved Superman ice cream. Cause can somebody make a vegan Superman ice cream? Anyway, <laughs> uh, Toby, I like how his color scheme turned out, I think, the most of any of them because it's, it's colors I would never pick for myself. But I really love that green, blue, orange, yellow color combo. It's great. Uh, Marty looks like a little ball of custard and he looks so cute and happy. I'm happy with how he turned out. Chelsea, I also think, turned out nice. And what is cuter than a deer that's wearing bunny ears? I don't think I can think of anything cuter, can you? <laughs> Etoile, the fan favorite, I think turned out okay as well. Um, I like her little teeny stars on her. It reminds me of like little star-shaped sprinkles. I always thought they were really cute. And Chai, my favorite. I like the little tea coming out of the top of her cup. I almost wish I had done a full splash looking back at it now, but I'll leave it how it is. I'm not going to mess with it. I think it looks pretty good, all things considered. And that's all the villagers. So what do you guys think? Who was your favorite Sanrio amiibo villager if you had any? Uh, did you have the cards? I had all the cards and I had all the furniture, but I only kept Chai in my village because she was my favorite of the six. Also, do you guys like my music choice of stale cupcakes? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an Animal Crossing law that if you have a pastel themed house or village that you have to play stale cupcakes in at least one room of one of your houses <laughs> or Rossetti bans you from the game. I'm pretty sure that's true. And if you guys love Animal Crossing as much as I do and love sketches and speed paints and cartoons and cartoony things, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified. I upload new videos every single week. You can follow all my artwork and especially my Animal Crossing A to Z full color process on my Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, all linked in the description below. You can also buy prints, stickers, t-shirts, tote bags, and more of all these villagers that I've posted so far, including these Sanrio villagers at the Redbubble link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day.